The other thing you absolutely do not want, you do not want any of these folds overlapping. Uh, here's a good example. Let's say you're dealing with something and it looks like that. As you can see, there's some little flaps in here, little flaps in here. Uh, the Silhouette machine does not like that. It, it won't even perform uh, that well. So you may end up with a few extra pieces, but it's worth it in the long run. Just separate out where you can, and that way there's no overlapping flaps. The other thing you can do if you're just you're dealing with a, a flap and you're like, oh, I, I really don't want to deal with all these pieces. I just want the, this one little thing like this, and I can deal with these little flaps later. You can actually edit the flaps. So in the uh, 3D menu over here, look up at the top left. We're going to go to uh, 2D menu. We are going to edit mode and then we're going to edit flap. You can also hit Control F, or you can do this. Again, 2D menu, edit mode, edit flap. Okay, so position we're not too worried about. The shape we can go ahead and change here. Now what you can do is change this to, I don't know, 0 .0001, uh, super, super small. You can set your angle, change it to manual here, uh, change this to, I don't know, 10 degrees and also 10 degrees. Do not select to all. Don't touch it. So again, this is just so you can edit these flaps on the 2D menu. You'll notice when you highlight over a flap that's about to be edited, it turns red. So it, tells you, it shows you exactly how big that flap is. So you want the edge of that flap to not cross over the actual cut line. Since we've just adjusted it, it's going to be a really uh, small flap that you're going to have here. And watch what happens when we click it. Very nearly disappears. And it's basically a small sliver. So you can do that with all of the other ones. If Again, if you really, really want to keep this shape, um, and you know this is going to be kind of a non-issue for you, you're going to figure out a way to fill it in or anything like that. So that's a way that you can adjust the flap size. Now for me, I actually want that flap there. So actually I'm going to hit Control Z, X, uh, Control Z. So now my flap is back. I'm going to separate that out again. Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with um, joining and disjoining uh, faces, you can actually do that in the 2D menu, edit mode and click Join Disjoin Faces. You can also hit Control N here. Again, 2D menu, Edit Mode, Join Disjoin Faces. Uh, also, this little icon here, it looks like arrows with little rectangles. That's the Join Disjoin Faces option. And it allows you to, again, connect pieces together. Anyway, so this is what I've done so far. Uh, for me, everything is where it should be, and with a few little tweaks here and there, I think I have exactly what I want. Uh, none of the pieces are touching. There we go. So I'm not touching the edges. That's what I want. So uh, depending on how the file was unfolded, uh, you're eventually going to want to make it look like this. Uh, so again, edit 2D menu, edit mode, edge color. We want to change the valley, mountain, and cut lines accordingly. Again, we want the valley lines red, the mountain lines blue, and the cut lines black. Now we are ready to export. I'm going to minimize this. We are going to create a folder that we want to export these DXF files to. Uh, let me see. I am going to create a folder inside my files here. So I'm going to go to New Folder. Come on, there we go. Uh, cod and butt plate. There we go. 
now we have our folder of where we want to save it. I'm going to minimize the window. I'm going to open up Peppacora Designer one more time, or maximize the window. And we are ready to uh, export this as a DXF. So once you've gotten everything uh, organized the way you want it, and everything is color coordinated, uh, and you're also, again, your valley and mountain lines are solid lines, again, setting, other setting, mountain fold line, solid, valley fold line, solid. Okay, so we are going to file, export, vector format, dxf per sheet dot dxf. Again, file, export, vector format, dxf files per sheet. Click on that. Now it wants you to save it. So we're actually going to find that folder in which we created just a few moments ago. Caught in butt plate. There we go. So what a DXF file is going to do is rather than create one file, I'm going to save that. It actually creates a separate file for every single page that you have created here. So in this case, it's creating currently six different files, one for each of these pages. So if we actually go in to that right now, let's take a look. There we go. So it just created six separate files ready for importing into the Silhouette Studio. All right, so we're, we are ready to go with step two.